This man is a doctor. You can tell by the way he dresses and the confident, relaxed, reassuring manner. But although he's a very good doctor, there's another character inside him struggling to get out. We wouldn't want the medical profession to be upset, but at the moment, the cowboy in Dr. Sam Hutt is on the loose. It's no wonder, really, because the songs he writes are more interesting than his prescriptions. But he's had to invent a whole new personality to go with them. Sam Hutt has become Henry Hardman, the country boy born only to suffer and sing about his troubles. All that riding on the range line makes a cowman change. I need a girl to rearrange his bike. Come on, honey, won't you rearrange it for me? It must be all that sitting in the saddle. It starts a lonesome battle when a girl comes by. He'll leave his cattle behind, leave behind. Lumberjacks may be big and tough. Truckers even stronger. But they know where. This urban cowboy wasn't raised in the Wild West, but in sedate East Anglia, in the sleepy Suffolk village of Wangford, as far away from the prairies as a tumbleweed from a pot plant. From an early age, he was mad about music, though it took him some time to get the hang of it. At this point, Henry's life wanders off into the realms of sentimental make-believe just like any self-respecting country song. He marries his childhood sweetheart. But tragedy strikes when she and his beloved son Clancy disappear on a package tour to Italy. Grief-stricken, Henry, or Hank as he prefers to be known, puts his old life behind him and sets off for a new life in America. Hank wandered the continent as a hobo and a hustler, picking up work and women where he could sometimes in road gangs, sometimes in gas stations. His emaciated look won him bit parts in third-rate westerns, usually on the wrong side of the law. The freewheeling life of the cowboy appealed to him, and he began to reflect it in his music. He formed his own band, the Hardman Tribe, and became a sort of musical half-breed. Henry, why did you become a country singer? Well, I guess it has to be down to the pain in the first place. That was the first thing that attracted me. I felt a spirit there. I mean, I guess that by that time, uh, at an early age, I'd seen more than my fair share of tragedy through uh, losing my first wife and, and then getting married a couple of times that didn't work out. You know, you, you get to learn to understand those songs that way. While you were in America, you changed your name from Henry Hardman to Hank Wangford. Well, that's true. I certainly did. Over there in Seattle, Washington, uh, we were playing to family audiences, because you understand country music is a clean music, ladies and gentlemen, and we like to keep it that way. So going out under the name of Hank Hardman was kind of difficult, sounded kind of dirty, you know what I mean? So we changed it to Wangford to keep it clean. Hank's new all-white band may have kept things clean, but they weren't clean enough for the audiences of the Deep South. Perhaps it was the name, Stanley and his famous Negroes, that gave offence. So Hank changed their name to the Hankerers, before forming another new band, Hank Wankford and the Spanish Waiters. How did Hank Wankford come to join the Spanish Waiters? Well, John, that was back there in Seattle, Washington. Uh, we met a fiery Spanish girl called Marie, who was uh, working as a waitress in a Mexican restaurant called Los Cajones Grandes, and when we got involved with her, we formed the band, the Spanish Waiters. The loss of Maria, his fifth broken marriage, had a shattering effect on Hank, despite the brave face he showed to the world. He turned from country to gospel singing, 
trying to find consolation in religion. Desolate, he returned to England and began to write songs on the harmonium in the bay window of his lonely rented flat. This was Hank's private chapel of grief. It was the beginning of what serious music critics have come to call the Wangford Hall of Pain, with all of Henry's bitter experiences finding personal expression in his terrible music. This was raw passion in E minor, or thereabouts. Now, I got religion pretty late in life. About the time I broke up with my, my third ex-wife, friend was a bottle, my life was a lie. And I couldn't believe in that pie in the sky. Or big dreams, I couldn't believe. He's bigger than you. He's bigger than me. That's what they told him. He's better than the smoke or a cup of tea. How can they believe a thing like that? He's the one. Set you free, Big G, Big G. What? When he manages to escape from his country music and the fictitious life he's built for himself, Hank, sorry, Sam, is as serious minded a doctor as any in London. Though even at work, he tends to dress more like Jesse James than Dr. Kildare and he did pick up his love for country music while working briefly as a doctor in America. Sam hates to be known as the singing gynaecologist because he keeps the two sides of his life completely separate. Tell me how you got involved in medicine and what you do. Well, I became a doctor so my mother would be proud of me. Uh, no, and seriously, folks, uh, it's a good job. I enjoy it. I do it well. And nowadays I work in a family planning clinic in central London do women's health care, contraception, uh, fertility, infertility. And I enjoy it very much. I do it on the national health, work three days a week, leaves me the rest of the time for music. All the same, it must be pretty difficult to combine being a doctor with being a country singer. No, people think it's schizophrenic, but uh, I don't have any problem with it. And neither do I. I leave him to do the doctoring, to attending to the women, he leaves me to do the country singing. And that way it works out just fine and dandy. Why did you come back to this country from America? Back here to England? Well, I guess it was the sort of stench, the reek of insincere sincerity that you get over there in country music. And you know, all that kind of, it's wonderful to be here among you wonderful people. And if I could up, put my arms round each and every one of you and hug you to death, I'd show you how much I love you. Stuff like that. I couldn't take it in the end. Uh, the songs themselves, though, can get pretty strange and pretty crazy at times. Give me some examples. Well, some of the lines, uh, I need somebody bad tonight because I just lost somebody good is a nice one. My personal favourite is walk out backwards so I'll think you're coming in. And there's another more chilling one, which is uh, if you want to keep the beer cold, put it next to my ex-wife's heart. The Wangford Hall of Pain is to be found most Thursday nights in the Nashville of North London, Stoke Newington. It's not the ideal spot for such raw emotion, squeezed as it is between the Ali Kasim kebab house and the co-op, but that doesn't bother Hank. The only worrying thing is that so many people are coming along to suffer at the Pegasus or the Grand Old Opry, as it should be properly known. Hank's becoming alarmed at the growth and the sincerity of his followers. He's tried religion and medicine. Now, in desperation, he's turning to drink. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tonight at the sign of the flying horse. Right there, there it is. Right there. Okay. We'd like to take you deep into the heart of the Wangford Hall of Pain right away with whiskey on my guitar. Hey, come on. Whiskey on my guitar and the bacon in my head. I spilled my soul, I lost control at the words I heard you said. Whiskey on my guitar and the devil in my heart. Oh Lord, you better rescue me before I fall apart. Now, now, there's times I've played my 
my way through heartache, honky tonk for pain. While I played it all away, it all comes back again. Well, I sung with boys with tangled minds, with big fools of the year. When they hear my story, they just can't hold back the tears. Cause I got whiskey on my guitar and a naked in my head. I spilled my soul, I lost control at the words I heard he said. Whiskey on my guitar and the devil in my heart. Oh Lord, you better rescue me before I fall apart. Whoa, whoa, Lord, you better rescue me before I fall apart. Got it. Thank you, Connie.